is general anatomy of nervous system in this we study the competency structure of a typical spinal nerve so there are 31 pairs of spinal nerves they are eight cervical 12 thoracic five lumbar five sacral and one coccygeal cervical one emerges between skull and atlas cervical 1 to 7 emerges superior to the corresponding vertebra and cervical 8 emerges inferior to cervical c7 vertebra and all remaining nerves emerge inferior to the corresponding vertebra and emerge through the vertebral foramen so the picture showing one spinal segment then the roots anterior and posterior roots then formation of the spinal nerve and also the spinal ganglion so each spinal nerve has two point attachments to the spinal cord the two point attachments giving rise to a spinal nerve is the spinal segment from each segment of the spinal cord six to eight rootlets emerge from the anterior and posterior surface of the spinal cord and converge to form anterior and posterior roots a short distance away from the spinal cord posterior root has a swelling called the dorsal root ganglion it contains cell bodies of sensory neurons anterior and posterior roots join to form the spinal nerve slightly distal to the ganglion the spinal nerve is a mixed nerve posterior root is sensory and the anterior root is motor after emerging from the intervertebral foramen the nerve divides into anterior and posterior ramus and a small meningeal branch meningeal branch enters the vertebral canal and supplies meninges posterior ramus innervates muscles joints and skin in the back larger anterior ramus innervates anterior and lateral skin and muscles of the trunk and gives rise to nerves of the limbs anterior ramus is variable in the thorax it forms intercostal nerve which runs in the costal groove and supplies skin and intercostal muscles the sensory fibers of the intercostal nerves are the common route of viral migration in a disease of shingles the motor fibers of the lower intercostal nerve supply anterior abdominal muscles then principles of sensory and motor innervation of muscles much of the brain and nervous system is devoted to processing of sensory input in most of the cases the relationship between the sensory input and motor output are simple and direct for example touching a hot stove elicits an immediate withdrawal of the hand what is motor control in each case the final output is a set of commands to certain muscles in the body to perform an action this process is called as motor control functional segregation there are two broad principles in working of motor control they are the functional segregation and hierarchical organization functional segregation the motor system is divided into number of areas and each movement is controlled with a strategy of divide and control hierarchical organization the areas are organized in a hierarchical fashion there are four levels of hierarchy in the motor system and they are from bottom to top are spinal cord brain stem motor cortex and association cortex the motor system and control has two side loops of the basal ganglia and the cerebellum which interact with the hierarchy through the thalamus spinal cord level this is the first level of hierarchy it is the site of location of lower motor neurons or alpha neurons it is also the site of many interneurons processing motor control 
alpha motor neurons innervate skeletal muscles motor control system requires sensory input in order to function properly in addition it requires sensory information about the current state of muscles the proprioception is a sense of the body position and is based on receptors in the muscle and tendons the muscle spindle signals the length of a muscle and changes in the length of a muscle the golgi tendon organ signals the amount of force which is applied to a muscle the picture showing muscle spindle another picture showing muscle spindle with uh, extra fusel or the main muscle fascicles and intra fusel muscle fibers muscle spindles the muscle spindles are collection of 6 to 8 specialized muscle fibers located in the muscle mass they have special receptors because of fusiform shape of the muscle spindle these fibers are re referred to as intra fusel fibers the large majority of the muscle fibers that contract are called extra fusel fibers each muscle has muscle spindles and the muscles that require fine movements contain more muscle spindles because the muscle spindles are located parallel to the extra fusel fibers it will stretch along with the muscle the muscle spindle signals muscle length and the velocity uh, to the central nervous system through two types of uh, sensory fibers which have stretch receptors motor neuron is divided into alpha motor neuron and gamma motor neuron the alpha motor neuron innervates extra fusel fibers the gamma motor neuron innervates intra fusel fibers the activation of gamma motor neurons causes a weak contraction of the intra fusel fibers in parallel with the contraction of the muscle when the central nervous system instructs a muscle to contract it sends appropriate signals to alpha motor neuron it also instructs gamma motor neuron to contract intra fusel fibers this coordinated process is referred to as alpha gamma coactivation the golgi tendon organ is receptor located between the muscle and the tendon they signal information about the load when force is applied to a muscle golgi tendon is stretched it fires action potential to signal the amount of force then we go to concept of loss of innervation of muscle and with its applied anatomy poliomyelitis and amyotrophic lateral sclerosis are the diseases which involve destruction of motor neurons poliomyelitis is affected by polio virus which destroys motor neurons in the brain stem and the anterior horn cells of the spinal cord the signs of poliomyelitis are muscular paralysis muscular atrophy and sometimes respiratory arrest then low gerhin 19 disease amyotrophic lateral sclerosis is also known as low gerhin 19 disease after the baseball player who had retired because of it the disease is marked by degeneration of motor neurons and atrophy of muscles most of the amyotrophic lateral sclerosis occurs when astrocytes fail to reabsorb neurotransmitter glutamate from the tissue fluid allowing to accumulate to neurotoxic level the signs and symptoms are muscular weakness difficulty in speaking swallowing and using hands then various types of synapses so picture showing one synapse nerve action potential go no further than synaptic knob or distal end of axon it triggers the release of neurotransmitter neurotransmitter stimulates a new local action potential on the opposite of synaptic membrane this type of synapse is chemical synapse a chemical synapse consists of three components the presynaptic membrane synaptic cleft and postsynaptic membrane 
in a synapse between two neurons the first neuron is a pathway called presynaptic neuron it releases neurotransmitters the second neuron is a postsynaptic neuron and it has receptors for neurotransmitters electrical synapse gap junction is synapse which allows action potential to move rapidly between adjacent cells they occur in neuroglia and cardiac muscle the gap junctions join adjacent cells in this type of electrical synapse the actions diffuse through gap junctions from one cell to next the advantage of electrical synapse is quick transmission example cardiac muscle and smooth muscle difference between sympathetic and spinal ganglia spinal ganglia spinal ganglia is also called as dorsal root ganglia it contains cell bodies of the neurons that bring information from periphery to the spinal cord the neurons are pseudo unipolar the fiber leading towards the periphery leave the ganglion through the spinal nerve fibers leading to the spinal cord travel through the dorsal root difference between spinal and the sympathetic ganglia capsule capsule is thick in spinal ganglia thin in sympathetic neurons pseudo unipolar neurons in the spinal ganglia multipolar in the sympathetic nerve fibers regularly arranged in spinal irregularly scattered in sympathetic satellite cells a layer of cells develop in the spinal only a few cells incompletely surround the sympathetic ganglia thank you